What's up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning in, race fans. I'm sitting here in Chassis Shop with Dave Lehman, the, I guess, new owner, Chassis yeah, I Lightning guess you Chassis? Yeah, I guess you could say it's something like that. Something like that? Yeah. Um, I guess on paper, that's how it is. Right. But uh, in reality, you know, there's a lot of people that are making this happen. Sure. And uh, I think that, you know, they all have a part in it as well. Okay. Um, Brian Gray has is, is been very, very... Uh, uh, central to what we're doing right and uh you know we got brandon gibson jr here with us now yeah and uh you know we're just trying to make it you know we're trying sure. to trying to make the company go forward and uh you know keep building good race cars so so as long as i can remember lightning chassis has been pretty much a, a mod chassis builder yeah me too <laughs> so how long have you been involved in racing so um, for those of you who don't know who you are where you came from let's start with that right so um i went to high school in berea kentucky okay and uh went to college in richmond yep. and as a part of that um i spent a lot of time at richmond raceway okay and uh i always saw lightning race cars and i don't yeah. know why but i always wanted to modify it and it was going to be a lightning yeah um don't really have any explanation for it other right. than that's how it was sure um when I got out of college, I didn't have any money, but I got lucky and started racing go-karts. Um, did that for about four or five years until my daughter was born. Right. And then, uh, you know, went into the corporate world and said, hey, I'm going to make enough money so that I can race. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so I, I, hope you, I hope you're just printing lots of it because that's yeah, what it takes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's true, though. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I, I finally got into the position. Uh, a guy by the name of Cecil Cochran had called me and, and mm -hmm. said, hey, I got a friend, Noel Oliver, if you want to hot lap his car. Um, he's looking for somebody to drive it, and he's right. willing to give you a shot. So okay. we went to Richmond Raceway one day in April, I think. It was cold, nasty, an old leaf spring car, but it was a lightning. Typical April. Yeah. And uh, I got to run some laps, and he's like, Mary, you want to drive it? <laughs> sure whatever yeah right? that's what so, i'm here for yeah so um i went and did that and uh i wasn't having any fun i was commuting from here to the racetrack and and okay. uh we were having some some problems um so at some point you moved from bria to cincinnati yeah yeah sorry i moved up here for work oh okay yeah, so, yeah. Um, lots of it up here yeah i worked uh at bill stein shock absorbers okay. over in hamilton yeah um and did that for about 13 years and the right. last probably five years uh, 2014 15 um, I was able to race but my my job there uh, didn't really allow the dedication that, that's right. required the time it, it didn't yeah. um, so I was at best uh, a weekend warrior and then and not even that in right, truth right. be told part-time part-time part, weekend part-time part-time yeah, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> so and then um, you know I didn't really have anybody to help I was trying to do it on my own and, and didn't, there. didn't know anything and right. didn't know what I didn't know um, that's a big one and you know people don't even realize that's a thing you don't know what you don't know right and sometimes you don't know what do i need to know and what do i need to ask to get there yeah and, it's a school of hard knocks yeah in the in the yeah you look it up in the dictionary and that's <laughs> yeah. what you're gonna find no doubt yeah um so you know i started reaching out to people and and getting help here and there and then we had motor problems and just a, a litany of things but i was determined right um got into a conversation with don about it i had bought a, a new car from him mm -hmm. and uh you know just through talking with him about how to put it together and and uh you know opportunity came in 2019 and and he was looking to retire and i was in a position where um i done what i grow? needed you to want do. to grow yeah I, I did what i needed to do in the corporate world right. and uh i wanted to try something else so right um, this opportunity came about and I, and I tell people, you know, and this may catch me a lot of crap, but it's like, you know, I'm trying to build a company that builds race cars. Sure. You know, there are a lot smarter people than me out right. there with these things. Same here. <laughs> um, but I have experience in building a company. I know how the companies need to run so right. that they're sustainable because I grew up, like you were mentioning earlier, I grew up watching lightning race cars yeah, yeah you know my daughter goes to the racetrack with me she watches she's 21 right now yeah she's seen lightning race cars yeah you know what about her kids yeah and, and the path that i feel like lightning was going on it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been there right you know um, i think you know with, cj with, is a, with donnie retiring and the, if somebody didn't pick it up where would it be where does it go where's the next generation go right and i didn't want that to happen i have no uh you know 
no misconception that I will ever fill his shoes. It's not right. even it's not even in <laughs> right. my scope, right. you know. Right. Um, but we have a good resource of people, a mm-hmm. um, bunch of good guys in our in our cars. Right. Um, I got you know just to name a few. You know, I got Ricky Bolton for example. He's a yeah. huge supporter of yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's that's, a, that's he's, a nice piece he has, man. That's a that's like a show car every week. I'm like, man, the thing is beautiful. <laughs> he, he needs to race it, but you know yeah. they've had some bad luck too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of people that have come together and understand what we're trying to do here. Right. We're trying to make cars that are as affordable as racing can be. You can know, be right you know, big key right there yeah i mean we're, we're trying to do that we're trying to build solid cars you know mm-hmm. we don't want guys getting hurt so safety safe. is first safe yeah, yeah um yeah. and then we're we're always experimenting you know i mean some of these other chassis builders you know i, I don't live in a bubble you know right, they right. got their stuff together yeah a big part of why they have their stuff together is they got good people working together sure. so we've tried to do that and and we're making progress i, right. I really think we are so. you know and I, th- I i feel like man that's like you said the that's almost that's like a perfect recipe if you've got the determination you've got good enough people uh i'm not gonna say some people having engineers doesn't doesn't hurt anything by any means but i think you guys are going to get there yeah you can't trade the experience sure right there there's no way to get over that right you know and and bringing an element of engineering into it it doesn't fix everything it doesn't work in the real world (laughs) right but what it will do is it'll get you 75 80 percent of the way there and And a lot of a lot of things you can engineer yourself right out of (laughs) right yeah don you know he he says it all the time you know you just got to get out and test them you got to get out and test yeah well i agree and and we do that yeah um, you know, you saw us there. We spin them out a lot, you know, sure. testing stuff um, because we have some engineered product or idea right, that we right. think and we want to see if it's applicable. And yeah. if it is, we, we go with it. And if it isn't, so be it. I, I, I used to be a, I was a union iron worker for, for about eight years. And there were several times, I'm not going to say every time, but there were several times we have just drawings and we're putting this building together. And it's like, well, this is what it says on paper. It's like, well, I don't care what the paper says. This ain't working. Work. This ain't working. So come here and show me how this is done. And it's like, oh, okay, that, that doesn't work. Yeah. I'll try to tell you that. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know, in since 2020 to today, um, the cars that we're building are, are very similar. We've made basically two changes to the cars okay. um, in the last three years. Right. They're changes that we believe make the car better or at least have an opportunity to be better. Right. Um, but the core of it's the same. And, okay. and what we're doing is we're building a notebook, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of information from a lot of people that are that are racing, mm-hmm. and we're working with it. You know, as a chassis builder, um, you know, our, our our Facebook like or follows or whatever, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. we're approaching 6,000. I don't know if that's good or not, but we have. I know what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so any, any of those lightning people want to care over to Slinging Dirt Media? Right. Come on in. Help DJ out. (laughs) He's helping us out. But I think we'll keep this ball rolling. (laughs) Right. And I think that as a chassis builder, you know, we have an obligation to help those guys. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't view our customers as as paying the bills. You know, we're trying to make their programs better. Sure. And we're collecting data and we're working with them. And we're not going to tell somebody what, you know, this car over here is doing versus what that car is doing. You know, that's not what we're after. What we're going to do is we're going to put the two guys together at the racetrack and say, hey, you know, here, here, why don't you guys work together? You know, you're you're pretty close, you know, and, 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 you know, it's just, I think it's working. Yeah. I remember when, when I first got into a modified and and I loved it, it it's probably one of my favorite cars I've ever drove was mods. But it was so simple. I mean, the car that I had had three adjustments. And for a guy like me who didn't know and probably still don't know anything, it made it really simple. I had a book that said, if the track is heavy, I go to this hole. If the track is slick, I go to this hole. Yeah, and then there's way. an in-between, and that's it. Right. That was what I needed. You know, that doesn't work for everybody, but that was what I needed. Simple. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, I think that if you put a holes in things, people think that 
it's worth more or something. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> we're the same way, you know, our, our four link brackets, you got all kinds of holes. I think right. we probably use, you know, four of them, four, four of a hundred. <laughs> right. you know, and, and, uh, but then if, if you don't have them there, then, you know, maybe, maybe it's, uh, somebody wants it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need so, somebody, well, I want the option to be able to engineer my way out of it. Right. And <laughs> usually doesn't work. Right. Simple is easier. So have you drove anything other than mods or just always stuck with, you just always mods. mods? just the mods hmm. yeah do you have a favorite track you've been to so um as far as favorite goes um i think i like lawrenceburg because okay. you know it's it's uh um i don't want to say it's an easy track but you <laughs> yeah know, it, i would it, say it's not an easy track. It, it's not an easy track but i mean it's a pretty hammered down track and yes. the banking uh helps the cars be pretty forgiving yeah yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you get into a racetrack like Moeller or, or Richmond, it's a little different story. You know? Technical. Very technical. Yeah. Um, Florence, they, <laughs> it gets me every time. Um, but, you know, so I don't think that I have a favorite one way or the other. Yeah. Um, have you got to go to Eldor? Have you got to turn laps so, to El Eldor yet? So that was on my bucket list. Yeah. You know, it's like I want to go to Eldora. And uh, we went this year. And we did horrible. No question about it. I mean, my car was so tight, I couldn't get it to turn. And they're like, you just need to drive it. And I'm like, I'm telling you, this car won't turn. It is tight. And uh, we worked to free it up. And, and by the end of the night, we got it free. Um, and I was I started on the tail. And I was able to move up to 10th or 11th. And I was like, you know what? This isn't hey, a matter. This it's isn't moving a, forward. <laughs> yeah, but this isn't a matter of, of if I crash, it's a matter of when. Yeah, you know yeah, I yeah, mean? yeah. Because it, it was sketchy, you know, I mean, for a guy. <laughs> Every lap, you're like, okay, this yeah, might be it. <laughs> yeah, so so I backed off it and saved the equipment, you know. So um, are, are those nights a little bit fun, the challenge of it, or you're just like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're fun, but it's for me, it's the experience, you <laughs> <Nope>. know. It's <laughs> the whole experience of it, yeah. you know. It's like it's part of the learning curves. you got to go through those sketchy nights to learn, okay, that whatever that was, that wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, it's it's – you know, Eldora for me is one of those things. It's like, you know, you don't know until you, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, it's like you have a car that's, that's, uh, at least in my case, when the car is tight and the nose is pushing, it takes a long way, a long distance before that thing corrects itself. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. You're, you're moving a lot of ground really fast. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, that's not something that I yeah. was completely prepared for. Right. Quite honestly. One of, one of my modifieds that I had, the guy told me, he said, uh, he said, when you get on the gas, he said, make sure you have that thing pointed in the direction you want to go. He said, you're not going to bring the ass end around with, with the throttle. He said, which, when you hit the gas, it's going to go in the direction. It's going to keep going. Yeah, well, I thought I knew better. I thought, yeah, okay. No, that, he was pretty right. When I went in turn one, and I'm like, I need to bring it around to turn two, and I hit the gas, and it went straight to the wall. I learned real quick, man, he was right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, and like I said, it doesn't slow down too quick there. No. So, and you know, what was really interesting for me, um, being there for the first time is, is the difference between running the high line and the low line. Big difference. And, and this, you know, when we were going, you know, in one and two, my car wanted to be up top mm -hmm. and three and four, I wanted to be at the bottom. Well, the difference in speed that you're carrying for corner entry into yes. three and four is, is significant. Yep. So, you know, our tracks around here, yeah, there's a difference on mm -hmm. when you're running the top and going to the bottom. But it's something that you can correct and compensate for. Yeah. And, you know, I've I'd found this especially true at Florence. And not every single week, but at times, there were times when whatever car I was in, there were times that that car wanted to be high in one and two, but that car was happy at the bottom of three and four. So as a driver, and you got to figure that out, you, you get them in mentally. It's like, okay, I'm either running high all the way around or I'm running low all the way around. But when your car is working better high here but then working low here it's like man trying to figure that out and then once you do figure that out it's like oh man now you're just running this weird line and people are like what is right but hey this is working it, it works and and but it's hard to figure out too. yeah and, and the difference in speed mm -hmm. you know i mean it, it really drastically changes your corner entry points right that um, goes back to the hitting your marks thing yeah absolutely and, and some people will be like oh, what do you mean hitting your marks it's like you they don't realize how technical racing can be it's not just flying by the seat of your pants it's pretty technical we talked to in in, in a week's time um i couldn't even tell you how many people call and yeah. and i would say that 
probably 75 percent of those car calls the people all have the same problem with their car right um they all say we don't have any forward drive what yeah. can we do forward drive right. or how do we get more drive and what is happening most of the time is the guy's cars are too tight mm -hmm. they just don't really realize it um and <clears throat> what they're seeing is the people that have their cars working and free they only see them when they're beside them on right. corner ex exit and then the other guys are, are pulling them down the straightaway right and they attribute that to to drive i don't have enough drive off right but it's yeah. it's more times than not at least what we see it's corner entry sure is, is where the guys are, are I, struggling in in a lot of people i mean most racers understand but how you enter the corner determines how you come off the corner and a lot of people don't think that way or don't realize well i'm, I'm this going in everything's fine going in but i can't come off well you may need to change how you enter the corner to affect what's coming off the corner. Definitely. That's that's usually what the conversations are. So we're yeah. always talking about, you know, trying to get the, the the drivers that we're talking to, trying to get them to back up in their right in their in their thought process. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, okay, I understand that, <laughs> that you don't have drive. I, I understand. Right. And, and I'm not saying that there's not something wrong or, yeah, or yeah, something yeah. off or, or that something we can't could be better, get better. But let's start talking back here. <laughs> sure, you know, and, sure. and trying to work through that. So, hmm. yeah. Um, Interesting. So you got big changes. Like you said, we talked with Brian in a different episode. You guys are moving shop. You're excited about that. Yeah, we are. So, um, you know, we were in this place, um, um, and it's not really – it's conducive to building race cars mm -hmm. because it's a big open factory yes. floor. Um, but it's not conducive to a race shop. Right. So so we're moving to the next phase, and hopefully, you know, we're, we're turning into more of a race shop. Um, hmm versus the the manufacturing so side as far as building a car and some guys just have a niche some guys are just man they're just good welders some guys are just good sheet metal guys or some guys are just hey i'm, I'm that putting bolting together which part of it do you like best so uh, i have a love-hate relationship with sheet metal <laughs> love so, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh when it's right i love it and when it's wrong i hate it <laughs> yeah and and i'll i'll end up splitting hairs um yeah. and you know, I hold the stuff to a lot higher standard than than probably is required, but I'm not going to back off that. Sure. I have an idea of, of what I want these cars to be, and, yeah. and we're working towards it. Um, we've got our equipment. We're CNC bending everything, and nice. it's taken a long time to get that stuff calibrated Yeah. Um, so that we get the same results every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea there is, is that if we can make the cars the same, then we can work with drivers then we can work with changes and know sure. that the car is is everything's the same the here yeah, right. yeah yeah i gotcha and and it also helps in in efficiency actually yeah um you know I agree. we're not having to go in and and rework everything right. we still have you're not reinventing the, you're not reinventing the wheel every week <laughs> right we we still have to rework stuff you know it's not a perfect process but we're going to keep working and digging and trying to get there yeah um you know these cars are you know they're amazing yeah quite frankly are you guys running into probably not not as production but like are you guys having a hard time getting parts and stuff because you guys are selling parts to customers and stuff like that is there outcoming stuff that you guys are having problems getting or so far we've been lucky okay um you know i try to keep my goal is to keep enough stuff for five cars Okay. So um, we had inventory through most of the stuff right now. Our shock inventory is pretty low. Right. Um, and then the only thing that really impacted us at all was rear ends. Hmm. Um, we went through a spell where we were probably, I don't know, three months longer than we should have been really? for a rear end. Yeah. Hmm. So I actually lost a couple of them as a right. result of it. But I think that's over now. now do, so. you, do you guys sell tires too, or do you order tires, or so, you just get them for your race team? Or so we've got customers? them for we've got them for our teams. And, okay. and what is happening right now is we're still on a limited supply, or so we're told. I right. haven't checked lately because <laughs> right. because um, at the beginning of the year, I think we got I don't know 15 tires or something like that, and the freight comes in, and by yeah. the time we add it on there. It, it's like I'm I'm at best trading money and most of the time I'm sure. losing money and yeah. it's like I'm not gonna be the guy like I, I know how racers talk I was one of those guys you know <laughs> it's like oh I went to buy them over here and they cost this much right you know he's taking advantage of, no we're not yeah I, I guarantee you we're not right so um you know we've we've kind of shied away from it now when the, the 
the supply gets back to normal, yeah, we'll start selling yeah. tires again. But right so now it's this, not worth it. This is a question I probably should have and meant to and definitely wanted to talk with Brian about, didn't get to in his episode, but what does Dave like to do outside of the race car? Any anymore? I, I, <laughs> is there is there a Dave outside of the race car? Right now, there's not. Um, there's not. It's no, just, it's you know, it, and that's honestly that's something that I didn't plan on. Right. You know, quite frankly, sure. Um, you know, I've had my hands on these things one way or another every day for the last three years. Right, twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. You know, mm. and, and if it's not the 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 laying in bed thinking about what happens if we change this bar angle or should we try that <laughs> spring rate? Right. You know, if if it's not that, then it's the business aspect of mm-hmm. it. You know, and and you know our economic conditions are a little bit unique right now mm-hmm. with with COVID and everything. Sure. So. Um, it's still a thing. It is still a thing. Um, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people after the North South have been been sick one way or another. Yeah, and and the impact that that had on business, mm-hmm. you know, in in general, um, we're still seeing the legacies of that. So, right. Um, right now, my time is devoted to this. You know, right. Um, I, I hate I hate uh, I hate not succeeding, and, yeah. and this is just a challenge. And so, other than racing, you don't have anything. This it's my downtime. It's my relaxed time. It's something that's going to unwind. You no. Know, uh, not you don't right look, you don't look like a golfer or anything like that. No, I've, I've been <laughs> no down hunting that or fishing road. or nothing like that. No, not since I I used to do all that. <laughs> yeah. and then I found race cars. I did too. I, one time. I used to do. I did. I, I <laughs> owned it. I played golf, all that stuff, and then yep. I found race cars. Found race cars. Yep. Yeah. So um, no, I hang out with my wife and, and my daughter, and you know she gets me sucked into these uh, Netflix. Oh yeah, binges. Yeah, right? Gosh, so those are horrible, ain't they? They are horrible. It's like, <laughs> I mean, oh, well, I, I just, just wasted, wasted four hours and <laughs> well, only four hours. Gosh, yeah. you're lucky. It's when, when I got to do that. It's like a day or something. I'm like, holy cow! I just wasted a whole day. Yeah, doing my that. ADD doesn't quite <laughs> <laughs> doesn't quite allow that. Oh, yeah, when I was younger, I used to play a lot of softball, and man, I had I revolved vacation around deer hunting. I used yeah. to deer hunt big time. Yeah, and then I found race cars and. Well, I mean, I knew about them, but then I actually got into race car. And it's like, yeah, that stuff is non-existing. I was exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly the same. When I moved up here, um, I hunted, I bow hunted quite a lot actually, yeah. and we got into that. Cincinnati. See, that's what I want to do. I've, I, I've recently picked up a bow in the last couple of years, and I've gotten pretty decent with the targets. Yeah, but I haven't got to take it in the woods and actually. Oh man, kill there's one nothing, with it. That's there's nothing like it. Yeah, you know, if you can get into the Cincinnati parks. That's that's <laughs> right, the deal. Right. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. So they have. Is there like a? I knew other places that have like a lottery. You got to sign in and register. I don't know. Do how they have it a is. lottery to to get into those things? I don't know how it is now. Yeah. Um, but when I was doing it, you would have to go qualify. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. if you got qualified, you got on a list, and then yeah. you got to pick what park you wanted right, at what right. hunt. And then uh, huh. the longer you're in it, the sooner you get the picks. Right. But, right. Man. But uh. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of deer in Hamilton County, and people. Right. I mean, I see them, not my backyard, but my neighbor's backyard all the all yeah. the time. It's like, man, I can pop up there in my bow and drop that dude. <laughs> yeah, we have a nice uh, herd of deer that hang out in the field over oh, here. Do so, they? Hey, I think we might start hunting yeah, again. But you can get a bow and drop <laughs> on those dudes. Yeah, my luck, it would go in the the parking lot <laughs> over here and drop. <laughs> Somebody come hey, out for lunch. I'm just, I'm just gonna get this out of your way real quick. <laughs> you see nothing. Yeah. No, and then uh, you know, um, not so much in the summer, but wintertime, I'm a gamer. So oh, okay. I'll, I'll get on the Xbox. And yeah. Burn hours. Like that stuff, huh? So yeah, mostly that's mostly wintertime stuff. Man, yeah, I used to, I used to love. I was me and Justin Owen. We were talking about the my old PlayStation Two and doing some World of Outlaw sprint car racing. I, mean, I still think that's one of my my favorite games there yeah. is out there. I, yeah. I get to sit down for what feels like 10 minutes. It's probably two hours doing that. <laughs> Burning it up, Yeah, right? yeah. I, I get it. I, I get never it. have time to do that anymore, though. I'm I'm right with you. But but I still enjoy it when I do have yeah. the time. Yeah, So I got I got a couple of vacations coming up I'm looking for, forward to. Of course, one of them is Eldora. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to go the week from Christmas to New Year's. We're going to uh, Siesta Keys. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We went a few years ago and we went fishing, went on a deep-sea fishing trip. That was a blast. So I don't know if we're going to go fishing this time or not, but you know what? It's just going to be a week in the sun, so it can't be all that bad. You know, owning owning a, a business, um, I think it's hard to do that. Sure. Um, especially in the business. Like, I personally feel it when guys call and, mm-hmm. and I don't have what they need. I mean, mm-hmm. we will go the extra mile to get it to them because these guys got racing programs that they got to right. keep going, right? Yep. So um, I think that right now, um, where we are 
versus where we were. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more inclined to feel like I can I can go on those vacations and um, get there at some point. Yeah, and get there. You know, um, this place right now between uh, Junior Brandon. Um, he can take care of all of our production stuff and, and building stuff. Um, and Brian's always around helping out. You know, that guy right. has been uh, very central in everything that we're doing. Nice. Um, if not, not only from the hands-on work and the experience, but also the psychological sure. part of it, you know. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I don't know how other guys are, but, you know, when I'm working with, with somebody and, and I'm always following up trying to see how their programs are going, and, right. and it's like I feel bad. When learn. <laughs> yeah, but I feel bad, you know. It's like I don't have anything to do with their name race car, quite frankly. But, right. you know, we're working together and, and trying to get their programs going, and it's like I'm part of that team. And, and you know, I'm, I guess technically I'm not, but, you know, we have a, a pretty good platform, I think, through the social media. So if we can help promote some of these guys, we're going to do that. Um, and also, you know, we want them having fun and want sure. them being successful. I think that's, that's part of the one of the biggest keys in this sport and things that people forget about the first thing is how to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason you get into this. You're having fun, man. Cause if you're doing it for the money, well, <laughs> no, you're, you're in a lose-lose situation yeah. already. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> right. You better do it for the fun. Yeah, and it's easy to lose track of that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I've been through it. I mean, burnout is real. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, people ask me, it's like, why aren't you going to the racetrack this weekend? I'm like, I just need a break. I yeah. just need to get away for a minute, you know, yeah. and, and uh, I'll go dormant. And then <laughs> racing comes on TV and I'm watching flow race. <laughs> All right. Know? I don't need to be at the track <laughs> or something. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, I think what we're trying to do again is, you know, we're trying to build a sustainable company, you yeah. know, so that it, it, it's going to run no matter who's here. It's right. not, you know, I don't, I want lightning chassis to be lightning chassis. You know, uh, Don Adams started it. He engineered it. This is pretty much his car design. Right. You know, and, and we're just trying to improve. We're not trying to recreate. We're not right. saying that there's anything wrong. Um, we're just trying to figure out how to make this thing keep it going and make going, it better. You know. Yeah. And uh, you know the the technology that goes into these cars is just amazing. Right. I mean, the fact that it works. You know, I mean, the fact that the rear ends <laughs> on these cars work. Yeah. Is just it's amazing it's mind-boggling yeah you know i i think uh you know you're talking about the hotbed right that we're in here mm -hmm. um dirt track races don't have the right place in the world no and you know whatever we can do to change that i'm all aboard yeah i think it's i think it's getting better i mean uh i i don't watch sunday racing like i used to uh, it's just it's just not what it used to. So, I, I'm I'm just I'm a diehard dirt guy, and I like it, and it's that's where I'm going to be. I'm I'm with you. I mean, you know, from everything from the competition to the the fans to the you know the the track personnel, the people that are doing the safety cre yep. crews. I mean, it's a way of life. You it, know, it is. It's for not, everybody. It's not just friends. It's it's your racing family. You yeah, know, I, I see it multiple times every year i have i have my family and then i have my racing family you right know? Yep, yep. so yeah but uh we'll keep doing what we're doing and you know hope to keep getting better right well dave before we wrap up this is anybody in particular i know i know you we've mentioned brian gray you mentioned brandon gibson jr Any, anybody else you need to thank before you know, we wrap things up I, I really need to thank all the people that have, have trusted us you know because you know these businesses were individual related mm -hmm. you know they're focused on a certain a certain person and um um you know don was integral to a lot of people's racing programs he's helped them sure. out a lot um and he still does and um you know there were a lot of people that were uncertain yeah. you know it's like hey what's going on here right you know, are, are we going to be okay are we going to still get good race cars and you know i just got to thank all the people that have, have stayed with us you mm -hmm. know um i should name them name them by name but i think then what's yeah. going to happen is somebody will get left yeah, out yeah, so yeah, yeah so um they know who they are yep. um i communicate that openly to them you know um and we're just appreciative you know it's about the people yep it really is you know we're not out um we, how do i say it um we're in a business and, and we're trying to make the business go forward and we're trying to you know make people successful and, right. and keep it as affordable as possible so i don't know sounds like a plan 
Yeah, it's something. So <laughs> it's something. We'll keep going. All right, folks. Well, we're going to tell everybody, appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in, checking out Dave Lehman here at Lightning Chassis. And uh, we hope you guys like this episode. So now you know what's going on here at Lightning and what's to come. And we'll see you guys at the track next week. Thanks. Right, thanks, DJ. Yep. Thank <laughs> you.